Hello there, this is Sherry Hayes with BombDelights.com and today we're going to talk about how to teach content, which is history and science, to children who can't quite read yet. So stay tuned. Well, one of my viewers said that she had children, that she loved the idea of just being able to teach them the basics, the tools of reading, writing, and arithmetic, and letting them explore and get the content or the history and science a lot on autopilot. I mean, it would really be nice or in a group setting or whatever, but that her state requires her to show how she's going to cover the content areas, you know, the STEM stuff and the history and everything. And so um, I got to thinking, I thought, well, you know, I know little kids, just because they can't read doesn't mean they want to, don't want to know about the world. In fact, they are the scientists and explorers, <laughs> aren't they? So I went through and I got my li went through my library and I picked up a whole bunch of things out that we have used that really, 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 really appreciated. And I thought I'd go through a step-by-step -step where I can show how you can take these materials and you can actually turn them into lessons, create lesson plans that um, your state official or whoever you're dealing with so you'll have something to show you that show them that you actually have a plan for science and history, even in the years where your child isn't reading that well or writing that well. So <laughs> let's dig in. First of all, I want to show you some of my book stash. You know, I have a library all over my house, and I try to weed out the stuff that I just bought because everybody was buying it or... Uh, I found and, and I thought, well, this might work, but it was really junk or stuff that's too schoolish. Although some schoolish things you can use kind of like as like a spine, they call it a spine, kind of like an outline that you can go by or that'll give you ideas of what else you want to do or whatever. Before I show you my book stash, let's go over what criteria I used to create and to compile this book stash. For one thing, I didn't just go to online to the homeschool sites and get whatever was on there. Because lots of that stuff is just re just like uh, public school stuff with maybe some Bible verses in. Not necessarily. There are some that are very thoughtful and very thorough. I'm not putting them down. But if I want to do a more Charlotte Mason approach to history and science, what I want to do is I want to make sure there's not twaddle you know, or they're not dry or boring or talking down to kids. I mean, kids are just younger, younger adults, right? So they have personalities, they have interests, they are curious, they are persons, right? That's what Charlotte Mason taught us. And so um, I try to um, not have those kinds of dry, awful books. Now I have a few textbooks, yes, but I don't use them as my main thing. They're kind of like uh, an outline for me so that I know kind of what I want to do with it. And and I love the creativity of putting things together, but you know, there are some publishers who really have taken on the challenge and they have more Charlotte Mason type uh, stuff that they offer, such as master books probably would be the best that I've seen. Maybe not, but anyway, I know that they, they combine the best of all things. And so if you had the money and you didn't want to like poke around to everything and and you just don't have the time or energy and you just don't feel creative to do that, well, especially at first, I think master books would probably be a great place to start. So that's just an idea. But there's a whole bunch of stack of other stuff over here I want to share with you. <laughs> so, so the first one I want to show you is American Pioneers and Patriots. Um, <clears throat> this book was published by Christian Liberty Press. This is the 1995 version. They've since changed the format, but it's the same stories. And basically, <clears throat> it is, this is this is the first Pioneers. This is about um, children from Spain that came to America. And so basically, it's a whole bunch of stories of different children that came to America, and they were pioneers. And instead of telling us, well, this is what they did, and this is the pioneers, and they came here in 16-something or other, what they do is... They tell a story of a little child during that time and what they were doing, and then they um, they have some uh, some uh, after after material like this has a number of like this is chapter two storm at sea, and it's very very Charlotte Mason. It's done in the form of a story that enthuses a child and gets them interested. And then here's the real cool thing: um, there are some let's see, sorry. Okay, so this is a really cool thing. On this one, 
they have these little things that show children useful things that pioneers had to do. This one is soap making. And it takes them through the whole process. And it's really, really cool. And at the end of the chapter, there will be things to talk about, things to do, and things to find out. So those are really cool. So if you've got a child who isn't reading very well, this would be really like a little, with little kids, if you're required to do some sort of history, this would be really good to read aloud to them. And they could tell back. They could give you an oral narration of what they read. And you could even do something about the soap making. Maybe you could watch a video. Maybe you could do some soap making. You know, you can buy the soap making stuff that you don't have to do the lye and the fat and all that like they did. But, you know, you could like um, get a soap making kit and just make your own little soaps. And that could be like a whole little unit. The next chapter is um, about how they built their houses. And another fun thing you could do when you're doing this one, you could take some popsicle sticks and you can all try to build a cabin. You know, there are different things. But anyway, this is something you could use and um, it could keep you busy for a while and it could fill a requirement. And you can definitely put that down um, on your plan for the year. You could say, well, we're going to do early American pioneers. And that, that would work, right? <laughs> Got so much to show you. This, my dears, is one of my favorites for little kids. It's um, McGuffey's Familiar Animals. Now, McGuffey did not write this. <laughs> this was written by um, John Monteith, okay? And it's written in a very engaging way. And it covers, it covers, okay, and little kids love animals. I don't know one little child that doesn't love animals. And this is stories about animals. First, they go through dogs, then they do cats, and then they do rodents, like rats and all that kind of stuff and squirrels and woodchucks and they do otters and they do <clears throat> horses and they do elephants and pigs believe it or not um moose reindeer buffalo um sheep and goats camels and um, i think they even do whales okay uh, monkeys and yeah then they end, end with a gorilla so um this is this is something that I got now I got this I believe through dollar homeschool but you can find it also in Google Books if you got the CDs or I don't know how he's offering it but from dollar homeschool um, they have a whole bunch of these old books but anyway I I actually I'm not sure where I got this I think I got this illustration off of clip art etc and I made me on cover I bound this myself I used a perfect binding method and I have a video on that and I also have it on my blog how to do it I just used a hot glue gun I used a long arm stapler and I uh, glued it together and I put a binder in. Anyway, so you can do this with books. Um, <clears throat> but there are really some really cool um, metal etching uh, illustrations in here, but the stories are so fun. And little kids would be so enthused. When Washington Irving visited Sir Walter Scott at Abbotsford, now that might be a little above little kids. You might explain that these were authors, right? <clears throat> Washington Irving, Sir Walter Scott, or very, very famous authors. He found him surrounded by dogs, which formed as much a part of his family as did his children. In the morning, when they started for a ramble, the dogs would be on alert to join them. There was first a tall old staghound named Maida that considered himself the particular friend of his master, walked by his side and looked into his eyes. Then there was a black greyhound named Hamlet, that gambled and put, cut capers with the wildest glee. Now you see this is written in an old fashioned way of speaking. However, your little kids can get this. I'm telling you. If you try, if see this is one of the problems that we have in our culture, is we've tried to dumb everything down so far that our children have nothing to reach up to and it keeps them infantile in their minds for longer. If you read this, and you might have to explain something now and again, if you read these, this old stuff, your children will rise to the occasion, and they'll start comprehending. And you know what? Then they can understand more complicated things as they grow older than their peers will, and they will be farther ahead. I know I don't want to do the competition thing, but in our world, we have to save our culture somehow. <laughs> We've got to start with our own kids, right? So anyway, this is just a really great resource. And I'll try to put the Google Books um, link down here so you can you can look at it. And maybe you'll want to do this too. Now you could print this out in 8.5 by 11 
double-sided and just stick it in a binder and read it. That would be fine too. And so then the pictures would be bigger. Isn't this cool? Boy, I'm taking so long. It's going to take me a long time to go through these books. I'm probably going to have to split this video up, I think. <laughs> anyway, let me show you another book. So this, so here's another book that you probably will not be able to find unless you really searched, but it's just an example of what's out there. I think we got this at a library sale. And this is one of those things that, this is a book they would put in a library and not necessarily teach a class or a course on, or anything, but it's just fascinating and kids love it. It's called More Power To You, so it, it's not a twaddle book. Um, and it was, it's about the power of the wind, the power of water, the power of steam, gasoline and diesel engines, mm -hmm. and new engines and new fuels. So this is like one of the really cool books. Uh, let's see, who is this done by? This is done by, uh, let's see, this is a short history of power from the windmill to the atom. Uh, illustrated, let's see, uh, William R. Scott Inc. Incorporated publisher New York and this was done probably in the 50s it doesn't say <laughs> that's how old it is <laughs> but anyway how power works for you this is something you could sit and you could read to your young children people are as soon as someone invented the water hoist someone else began to wonder if the power of falling water can be used to lift such heavy loads perhaps it can do other kinds of heavy work too see so it's written in a very engaging manner, and it has all kinds of, you know, they're black and white, but they're fun illustrations. So if you can find books like this, I mean, you can even try to find this exact one. My little girl loved this book, and I know boys would love it too. So this is just one example if you could find, I don't know if there's a series. It doesn't look, okay, Young Scott Books. That's what this is from, the Young Scott Books. It's something to look up. Maybe you can find these books. Your kids would probably love them. Okay, anyway, next book. Here is something near and dear to little boys' hearts. It's dinosaurs. And this is dinosaurs by design. So um, it goes through, and this is an old version. They've got a new cover on the new version. But it has really good illustrations, and it talks about dinosaurs from a creation perspective. Uh, here's a cool one. This is a human brain and a stegosaurus brain. So that's a comparison. That's one of the things. And it's, it's kind of got um, more of a narrative story to us. Uh, uh, it's kind of got a more of a narrative story to go along with it so that it's easy to read and it has stuff in there that kids that maybe can't read and write so great would still be very interested in. And it's a godly perspective. So it's kind of a win-win-win. So this is really a good one. Here is the Ambleside series geography book as it has been uh, remastered by uh, Living Books Curriculum. So. This is really cool. This is from Charlotte Mason herself, and it's about geography. This is a really fun one. Now, the, the illustrations are rather archaic, but you can still understand them. And this is something little kids need to know. This would be, and it has, oh, it has poetry in there, too. Like, the sunshine, here's a poem. Um, so you could read this aloud to your little ones, and um, they could go through the different exercises. I think there are exercises in here. I'm not 100%, but I think. Oh, there are questions, okay, and Matt questions, and different things. Anyway, so this would be really fun to do, and you, I'm pretty sure I've seen this for free on um, different places. So it's something you could do, either on Gutenberg uh, or Project Gutenberg or um, Google Books. You can find this, but or you could purchase it from the, um, the Charlotte Mason Cur uh, Living Books Curriculum, sorry. And I have a number of things from them too. But anyway, this is something that's easy and then you can put it as geography for your kids, right? This is something fun. This is an older version, but it's Usborne. You can find these probably for a song. Um, this is Usborne Introduction to Physics. Now, this is full of illustrations and it has all kinds of neat things that little kids would like to learn about. And you could do one thing. This is reflection, and it talks about how it works and what makes it happen. I also have the the newer version of the huge encyclopedia. This is this is a little simpler, I think. But anyway, it's something that you could think about doing. It might be a little above some kids, but you know, if they're getting like a little more towards eight and nine, to where they're reading okay, but they can't really write, and and it's just fun to go over this. This is a good one. So these this is a series. I think there's chemistry. 
and I think I'm not sure it's all of it, but they have a number of them, and there there are newer versions of these. Here's something really good to use with early learners, especially if you need to do some American history. This is Alice Dogleash, the Fourth of July story, and it's got a lot of really nice illustrations. It's a picture book, but it's the story of the Fourth of July, and um, it reads it reads very simply. For little kids and then they can do I'm going to show you how to take these things and use them here in a minute but you see that oh, isn't that pretty what you want to do when you're working with little kids is when you come to one of these spreads don't just glaze over it sit and look at it and talk about all the different things in the picture like if you have just little kids um, you might have some little tiny toddlers that you'll just pick out the different colors and then and the older kids you'll have them look at different things in the picture and just use every little bit that you can in the illustrations because see illustrations stimulate language and they get kids talking and thinking and when you get them talking and thinking you help them to communicate and that's really what we're trying to teach with all this language art stuff we're just trying to teach our kids how to communicate right so that's something you can do the next thing I want to mention is child craft okay these this is the child craft series and I know you can find these I bought these on eBay I had I had a, a one of these sets and my kids loved it absolutely to death <laughs> I mean it was falling to pieces so I'm sad to say but anyway I found this um, they're, they're almost in brand new condi condition you know these were so popular in the 50s and 60s that you can see them I've seen them a number of times when they do the sets for like the different um, like the uh, uh, detective shows and stuff and they're going to the lawyer the lawyer will have a set of child craft on the book on the bookshelf <laughs> I noticed these things but anyway um, so in the child craft series there's science and history this is one and then there are um, exploring the world around us and there's another one with historical pe people I meant to grab that but anyway um, this right here exploring the world around us is really good it's got illustrations and it's about little animal creatures and about the forest and about all those kind of things um, and it and animals of the woods um, and our pets the animals we know best armored the armored porcupine um, here's some more some more pictures. It's it's really sweet, and um, says the raccoon or coon has a ringed tail. So this is the little, little dryer, I think. It's not really like a story, but it's still fun to read and look at if you wanted to know about some animals. Now this child craft is um, got it's got some really interesting things. So if you can see this, and it's this is done from a really simple thing. Okay, Hap, what happens to the food? A plant makes all plants make food so that they can live and grow what happens to all this food where is it stored lettuce and this so there's a lettuce and a cabbage and um, it kind of talks about all kinds of stuff the highlands and I guess you, could, you know, we call this kind of earth science is what it is and this would be really simple to do with a child just take a chapter and just you know you don't have to do anything fancy you can just read through it and look at the pictures like these illustrations are great things to talk about and look at and then you can kind of think of things you might want to do with it oh but if you want to know even more let me get you the, like the mother the queen of all nature study books for young children that is this one this is the Charlotte Mason community's favorite it's Anna Botsford Comstock the handbook of nature study or it just says handbook of nature study and this you can definitely find free online although if you tried to print and bind it yourself it'd be kind of crazy because I think there's like what 1100 pages to it oh no it's only 880 I guess or something like that 800 but it's a huge book and it is so much fun and it has poetry in it and it has questions and it has suggested activities it's just amazing and it covers almost everything it was done um, Anna Botsford Comstock I believe was a professor at the um, Cornell University. Cornell University studies a lot, a lot of farm stuff, a lot of animal stuff, and so it's a lot of fun stuff. The English Sparrow. So dainty in plumage and hue, a study in gray and in brown. How little, how little we knew the pest he would prove to be, the, the pest he would prove to the town. From dawn until daylight grows dim, perpetual chatter and scold. No winter migration for him, not even afraid of the cold. Scarce a songbird he fails to molest, 
belligerent, meddlesome thing. Wherever he goes as a guest, he is sure to remain as a king. And that's by Mary Isabella Forsyth. But anyway, you see, <laughs> and it says the English sparrow, like the poor, uh, like the poor and the house fly, is always with us. And since he is here to stay, let us make him useful if we can devise any means of doing so. There is no bird that gives the pupils a more difficult exercise in describing colors and markings than does he. And his wife is almost equally difficult. You see that? So it's got this really engaging narrative kind of a style to it. So this is a lot of fun. And this is worth, you know, purchasing, right? So you can use this for years. And you can just, like, you don't have to do the whole book sequentially. Let's say it's in the middle of winter. This actually does have about... Um, ice and snow and stuff and so you could just and I have actually done this before you could just take the chapter on weather and ice and snow and let's like say not so much in December but like in January when things like Christmas is slowed down and you just need something to do you can just go in the chapter on ice and snow and you can study the different things and then you can use that to watch a couple videos maybe get uh, some free printouts anyway it could go crazy and you could just have a lot of fun with it so that's another way that you can enjoy some science with your children who aren't really reading that well yet. Here's a more contemporary book that I use. It's the ABCs of Nature, and this is done by Reader's Digest. And it oh, it's, this is amazing. It just gives the basics of everything you could talk about nature. It even goes into geology and uh, locomotion in the ocean and elsewhere. So this is they have these fun little things, and you could spend hours just you know opening it. These are like open and go kind of books. We just kind of open it up, and whatever it interests you, you can just read about it. And there is nothing wrong with that. However, you're going to have to try to put it in education ease, which we will go over soon. It's not as hard as you think. <laughs> Here is a beautiful modern book. This is by Jim Arnosky. And he actually sent me this book a, what, many, a few years ago to, um, to review for him. And I was so glad. It is so beautiful. What it is, it's the creatures of the ocean. And he is a ma marvelous illustrator, as you can see. And here are some of his sketches that he's done. And he describes, We were heading back to land after a sunny afternoon out on the water. I pushed the boat's throttle to make us go faster, and suddenly Deanna shouted, We have company! A pod of bottlenose dolphins was swimming behind the boat, leaping and splashing in our wake. So you can see how little kids would like that one. And he, in this book, um, he has the illustrations that you can open up. Oh, it, they're so pretty. Like, look at this one. This is, I believe, sailfish. Let me, let me get this just a second. I believe this is sailfish. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine? And I think you could probably get this at your public library. So it might have a little evolution in it, but, you know, if you've, if you've already discussed, you know, um, God's creation, your kids will be just fine. You just explain it. Here's a, here, I think this is a manatee. Yeah, this is a manatee. Isn't that pretty? So this is really lovely. And there are all kinds of books like this that you can get from the library. You can sit down with your child. And you can, like, this is, like, you could have, we're going to do a unit on the ocean. And you could uh, get your, get to go, like, go on Amazon. Put this book in. Put simmer, uh, Shimmer and Splash in. And see what other books come up. And then make a list. And then go to your local public library and see how many of those books you can check out. Then you can put that down on your thing. Well, we're going to do an ocean study, right? And then let's say you're planning a trip to to the ocean. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but anyway, this is just an example. So then you go home and you start reading the books aloud to your little kids. And they don't have to be, re you're reading aloud to them and you're enjoying the illustrations. And they're learning so much. And then I'll show you what else you can do with them in a minute. But um, in a minute, like in an hour. <laughs> Um, and then what they can do is they can take and they, they'll be learning so much and you have done your requirement, right? But you're really just enjoying each other. <laughs> so here's a book that you can get. This is a modern book. And this is uh, Betsy Maestro and Giulio Maestro. They did a series of these books. Um, these are American story series. And they have, this one is Struggle, Struggle for a Continent. They have um, this, the discovery of the Americas from the prehistory through the age of Columbus. They have exploration and conquest, the Americas after Columbus. 
The New Americans, Colonial Times, and more A More Perfect Union, The Story of Our Constitution. So if you're supposed to do American history or you feel, you know, this would cover your history part, you could just read these books aloud to your children. I'm not sure they would be for toddlers, but they would be for, like, I know, six or six to six to ten year old or something like that and um, even older if they would want to read that themselves or if you just want to use this as a spine but they're they're beautifully illustrated they have maps they have um it's written in a narrative style so it's a twaddle free book and it's really a lot of these are very beautiful that's why i purchased this one new because i liked them so very much <laughs> here's an old series that you can get a hold of uh, this is the how and why Wonder Book series. And this has a, happens to be on weather. And weather is one of those things little kids love to love to learn about. And they actually include experiments in here. And um, and so that and they're really easy, simple experiments with stuff you have, like flashlights and balloons and stuff like that. So um it explains the, the, the water cycle, it explains all kinds of cool stuff. And you know, here's yeah, the climate, it talks about climate. And it does all kinds of stuff. Now, this is the old-fashioned climate, not the baloney climate. So, anyway, um, and they have all kinds of them. Let's see, they have weather, electricity, rocks and minerals, rockets and missiles, stars, insects, reptiles and amphibians, the Civil War, mathematics, airplanes, and the story of flight, ballet, horses, chemistry, interplanetary, oh, yeah, wild, wild animals, sound. They have all kinds of trees. So, if you look, you can find these. Um, the how and why wonder wonder book. So anyway, they're a lot of fun. So here is the illustrated picture atlas of the world. This is another fun way you could do geography. And I know there are a number of different books, probably Usborne, probably Dorling Kendersley, DK does them. And basically you just take a country and you learn about the map. You learn a little bit about the country here and the surrounding of the pages. But you know, it's just a really quick, every once in a while, just if you want to take this book out and just do that, that's an easy way to get it done, right? And it's fun. So that, we got this for one of our daughters, and oh, she just ate it up. She loved it. Here's a fun one. This is the Usborne Time Traveler. And I think this is written more from um, a, a UK perspective, but it's still got loads of fun in it. And it's got the illustrations. I don't know if this is a newer book or if, if they still sell this new or if this is an older. I'm not sure. You could... You could you could look and see. I think I've seen this as a newer book, still in pub publication. But anyway, so uh, this is a castle map of all the castles, and they go into castles, and it's so fun. And what you do is you like okay, Viking raiders, and you learn about the Vikings, and here's the different people in the Viking culture, um, and how they lived. And oh, this is really cool, Newt's farm, and so it goes into all this, which is fun. And also, it goes into Egypt, it goes into the Romans, it goes into all kinds of really fun stuff. And so a little child, all ages of your children could enjoy this book. Older children even love it. <laughs> but see in these, in these illustrations, there's just so much to look at and talk about. And oh, it's just amazing. So this is one of those things. And so you're covering history, right? But you're sitting there and you're enjoying your, yourselves. And um, you're, you know, you're encouraging communication. And you don't, they don't have to read a lot with these books. You can read a lot to them. So this is just one of them. There are others. Um, History of the World is, is one. And let me, let me share the other one I have right now. I have the History of the World, but it's upstairs. So, because I was looking at it for something. But anyway, this is the Roman world. This is a newer one. Um, and it has like everyday life. This is, this is their, their newer, um, how they were doing things. This is at the games. This is about the Romans here. Um, here, uh, the rise of Christianity. It's in here, which is interesting. And so they have all this stuff in here. It's really a really a cool book. I really highly recommend the Usborne books. If you have younger children, it's more pictorial than it is a lot of reading, and so you know encourages communication and all that kind of thing. Okay, so I've I've gone. I know I have. I probably could spend hours <laughs> more books. Um, another way you could just pick a novel 
that a child would understand kind of from that time. And I know there's there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, there's oodles and oodles. I'm just giving you a start and just trying to stimulate your imagination and your creativity so that when you look at things, you'll know kind of what to look for and how you can use different things. Okay, one thing that I wanted to share with you now um, is DIY Homeschooler. So let me get that website up and let me show you how, in, how interesting and uh, important this can be for your kids. So this is my little cheap Android tablet here, and I'm going to show you. This is the home page for DIY Homeschooler. And you'll see there are all kinds of nifty things on here. Um, book deals. There, what, what I like about DIY Homeschooler is they take books that are in the public domain, and they show you how you use them in unit studies and things for your kids. So this is this is really a fun site. They have actually links to notebooking pages. They kind of show you, take you step by step, a little bit, step by step. And they have also links to other uh, materials that will help bolster whatever a subject you're studying. And you know, like they have whole unit studies. I mean, they're really a lot of fun. So this is a really good site. Remember it, and I'll put the link in the description below for DIY Homeschooler. There's the so you'll know you're on the right place. Okay, so that's really a good, important thing to do. So I think I've given you a lot to go through. I mean, I mean, I know you're going to want to take those lists if you're like me, and you're going to want to check it out on Amazon, check out online, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot of stuff to do. And I don't want to overwhelm you. So um, I think I'll stop here with this portion, and I'll give you something more. What the Lord laid on my heart just yesterday was this phrase gentle persuasion and I thought I'd like to share it with you so I looked up the word gentle and I looked up the word to persuade and I also found a key verse for this idea and the key verse is this by long forbearance a ruler may per be persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone isn't that interesting so then I looked up the definition of persuade and it means to make someone do or believe something by giving them good reason to do it or by talking to that person and making them believe it. Talk someone into something or to convince or encourage something to do something. Okay, um, but gentle, here's gentle, and this is very important. It's moderate in action, effect, or degree, not harsh or severe, a gentle breeze. Not rough, harsh, or severe is the main idea. It is tender and amiable. It is considerate or kindly in disposition. And so I was thinking about how important that is. As women, we've been taught, you know, see, I was, I, I've been alive when they were switching over to the new femininity. And originally, women were taught that we were supposed to be gentle and sweet and kind and all those things are always appreciated. Now, it doesn't mean we can't be spunky or tough in a lot of ways, but we're not supposed to be abrasive, right? And um, so the idea they, they told that they said they would say that women need to be more assertive. You've heard that before. It probably doesn't like it's part of our culture. We don't even think about it anymore. But back when I was young, it was a new thing for women to be assertive. Now, what it's turned into these days is that women are encouraged to be brash and abrasive and and pushy and rude if it makes a point and we're crude and we're nasty and all that kind of stuff but I don't believe that that is using our femininity to its greatest advantage <laughs> I know how to be rash and rude and and crap crude I know how to do that stuff <laughs> I know how to be bossy in a very uh, abrasive way but I don't know if that's really, I mean, everything is lawful, but not everything is profitable. God doesn't hate us because we're like, hmm, you know, God doesn't hate you if you do that. But I think that God wants us to have more wisdom and God wants us to understand not to be manipulative for an evil end, but we'll have more influence if we understand who we are as women and use our femininity to its greatest advantage when we're trying to influence people for good. That's not for selfish ends. It's not for evil. But we're trying to influence people for good. We'll probably gather more flies with honey than we do with vinegar. Just say it. <laughs>
So anyway, that's my thought for you today. <laughs> so you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>